Hey, what's up guys? It's Charles here with D2IPDesigns.com and I'm bringing you another tutorial. Today's going to be an Illustrator tutorial where I show you how to make a sort of simple vintage logo like this with some grunge effects. Um, it's nothing too complicated, but uh, it, it, these sort of logos do seem to pique people's interest. They like the look of them. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do something fairly simple today. So you're going to need to grab your rectangle tool. I'm going to go ahead and find the center here, which is right there. Uh, it's, it's really made a lot easier by using Smart Guides. I always recommend it. You can go to your view up here and then click Smart Guides or just hit Control and Heal. Anyway, whoop. so I'm going to go to the center here. I'm going to go ahead and scale it up. I want to go ahead and scale from the center, so I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this out like that. Okay, I'm going to go to my pen tool. And I'm going to go ahead and put a mark there. And I'm going to put another one here. Now, I want to take this point here, and I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to bring this point down. So let's increase this by... Hmm, let's increase it by 25, so 450. Oh, okay, i got to go in the opposite direction. So, make that 400. I'm going to need to increase this by 25. There we go. Something like that. I really should probably increase these a little bit more. So, let's go ahead and double it. Let's make this 375. And then let's go ahead and make this 624. There we go. That's probably a little closer to what I need. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and select our object. We're going to go to Effect, Stylize, and then Round Corners. You want to make these pretty round, but nothing too crazy. Of course, it also depends on the look you're going for. Um, I'm going to go 16 for this. Just gives you some nice round corners like what I have here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on it again object and then expand appearance and now everything just adjusts okay so we have that that's the basic look we want so let's go ahead and click on it again go to object path offset path okay click this little preview thing here and you'll be able to see where the new path is being created so let's do six that's probably closer to what we need. Now I'm just going to go ahead and turn on stroke. Go ahead and turn this up a little bit. Okay, so now we have the basic shape of this. As you can see, they're slightly different. This one's a little bit thicker. You can change that by coming in here and selecting everything and dragging this down. That's if you want to. You don't have to. I'm just going to leave it as it is. There's nothing wrong with the shape. It's just a little bit different from this one. So now let's go ahead and work on this kind of like banner that comes across here. Again, we'll need to grab our rectangle tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale from the center like we did last time. Uh, probably something about like that. Um, I don't want the stroke on it right now. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert a point here. And insert a point here. And again, uh, the uh, the smart guides is really helping me. If I didn't have them, it'd be much harder to find the center. So I really recommend you guys use those. Now I'm going to go ahead and find my point here. I'm just going to drag it back to about there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this point and drag it to about there. So I just drag it to where it intersects, and now you see we have a similar shape as to what we have here. Okay, um, go ahead and drag this out a little bit, increase the height, and now let's go ahead and center everything back up. So hit this and hit this. And that should pretty well fix it. So, all right, now as you can see, these aren't this, this here is not exactly the same as this here. There's differences, obviously. 
but that's fine. I mean, I'm just trying to give you guys a general idea of how to create something like this. It's not going to be exact, and uh, you guys will be able to tweak it to your own specifications and what you like. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select this, and I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path, Preview. Now let's go ahead and add a stroke to this. So that's the basic look that we want to go for here. I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out a little bit more. And I'm also going to, oh, I need to grab both of these. There we go. Bring this down just a little bit. Select everything again. Line it all up. There we go. OK. Now, all we really need to do next is just add in the text, and we can go ahead and add some grunge. Um, so we can just go to this rectangle tool here, just make some little lines, make it white, turn off the outline. That's a little thicker than I want, so I'll just go ahead and shrink that down. Yeah, that's, that's more like what I want. I'm not going to worry about uh, the font or anything like that. I really should add this in on a different layer just to help keep everything uh, a little more organized. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move these into layer as well. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and increase this. Maybe scale it down a tab. All right, still a little large, so I'm going to scale it down some more. Now, again, this is you know not the exact same scales, or it's not the same scale or anything like that as the one over here, obviously. Um, the shape of this is a little different, the shape of this is a little different. These are bigger, this is bigger. I just want to give you guys a general idea of how to make a logo like this, and then you guys can tweak it to your own specifications. So I'm going to go ahead and select this text. I'm going to hold down Alt, and then drag it down here, and it makes a duplicate. Now I'm just going to take my text tool, select it, and I'll just type in a year. So established in 1982. And then we can go ahead and center these up. There we go. This needs to be brought up and over a little bit. All right, I think that's pretty good. And now we can just your name, select it, make it white, and then drag it on here. There we go. So that's the basic look of it. And now for the grunge effect, um, I already have a grunge over here selected. Um, what I would recommend is I would just go to Google and I would type in um, Illustrator grunge vector and you'll pull up a bunch of different results and just find one that you like and then uh, use that one. So I'm going to make a new layer for the grunge and uh, I'll go ahead and title it grunge just to help keep track of everything and we're going to need this to be white. So there we go. We can scale it up if we want to and then you can delete what you don't want, um, or if you want all of it, you can just put all of it on. Um, but rather than deleting it, what I prefer to do is uh, I like to select the grunge, and then I select my base layers, and then I go to transparency, and I make a mask. 
So now go ahead and invert the mask and turn clipping off. Now, as you can see, you don't get all the pieces out here. As well, um, if we go ahead and put a background on this, I'll go ahead and name it BG for background. If we make a background layer, let's go ahead and make it red. Um, as you can see now, um, you can see the background where these grunge spots are, which is cool because the grunge spots are meant to simulate like, oh, kind of worn out old logo like maybe the paint's chipping off or something like that. So you'd be able to see whatever is behind it. So by using one of these, oh, I need a, by using one of these uh, masks, um, you're able to get that sort of look to where you are able to see the background behind it. And it also saves you from having to delete a bunch of the points outside. Not that, it, that, that it's that difficult, I just think this is a better way of doing it. So, and then to save it, you just come up here, save as, or export if you want to save it as, a, as an image file of some sort. And that's it, guys. This is how you can design a simple uh, kind of vintage, old-looking logo. Um, so just play around with it. Like I said, I, I didn't do it to, you know, the exact specifications of this one. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. Hope you uh, now have a better idea of how you can design some of these sort of logos. And uh, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.